So yesterday I built up the nose and from this profile, I felt like it was really a little bit big. So I went in this morning and I started to shave it down and I really like this side much better. So that's kind of, you know, the, the thing with sculpture is you could always add on and you could always take off. So I went in with my little ribbon tool and just kind of looked at the picture and started to lightly scrape off some of this extra clay. Now, if your project is thin in some areas, you could always go over it and patch it up. But I really felt like this needed to be shaved down to make it look more realistic. More realistic to the, the little form. So I do want to keep it kind of straight in the center, but I do want to have it a little bit more bulbous around the edges. Oh, that's okay. Let me just go ahead and adjust. Thank you for it, let me know. Okay. So I'm really just gonna go in and carve this and just keep looking at my image. So I'm kinda going off of these guys right here. Like I said, they are in your PowerPoint. And you can pick your sculpture up, you can move it around. And like I said, if you make a little mistake, you could always go in and add more clay. So I really just wanna go in and scoop some of this off. And you'll kind of have to play around with it depending on, you know, what yours is looking like right now. I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna start to kind of pinch this together and smooth it outward. And just really manipulate the clay by smoothing and by adding and scooping some off. So I'm still gonna go underneath. I'm gonna flip them over. And because I'm pushing um, the nose back, I decided to take the eyes off and I'm just gonna add them on again today. But I did have quite a bit of clay here, so that's, pretty, that's good. I feel like if you guys did the nose uh, similar to the way I did, you should have a bit of clay to work with. And I'm just gonna kind of pinch it thinner as well. And be delicate with it when you're sculpting. It may look like I'm pushing down really hard, but I'm just using my hand pretty lightly. I'm starting to notice, you know, I took all this off that I'm liking my profile a lot better. I think that's looking much more like the form. Now, some of you guys might notice you're a little wibbly wobbly. Um, this might be a little top heavy. A few different things that you can do. Uh, number one is you could add some clay uh, to the back to the back of the legs or to the back of the sculpture. I was taking just little pieces like this, kind of compressing them on to the legs and just smoothing them up. And that's gonna give you a little bit more weight. And just make sure you're smoothing it in really well. to the back and really anywhere 
on your sculpture that you feel like you need to add more clay. If you feel like you need to bulk up the chin area, you could add a little bit more clay on. And I'd really like to see um, some of them that you guys are working on towards the end of class. Just so I could give you some pointers on how to continue or if there's something I think that would be easier to move. And before we go in and apply the underglaze, you guys are gonna, gonna wanna let these dry out kind of slow. Mine is almost like leathery hard right now. Um, I'm gonna go in with a rib tool and sm smooth it. But before I go ahead and add the eyes, if you look at the nose here, it's quite flat. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to remove some of the clay. So yesterday we kind of got like the basics down. Today we're going in with a little bit more detail. And I'm just gonna kind of smooth it back. And hopefully you could see up close how it's flattening a little bit. Just take that piece off. And I'm gonna still kind of work on the front too. I'm gonna kind of push it in, just making sure that I have those rounded parts. at the picture. Like I said, uh, you know, when you're looking at the image, it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to go in. You could see that that's a lot more flat now. I'm going to still take some out from this side. I'm going to actually shave this down a little bit just because it's a little bigger than the other side's ear. Sculpting's all about, you know, what you see, whether you're sculpting something realistic or something from a picture. And sometimes when I'm sculpting, I almost just start with kind of like a big lump of clay and someone's like, that's not gonna be a sculpture. And I'm like, no, 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 it will. You just need your base. You need all your basic shapes first. So yesterday we got our basic shapes. And you probably, you know, you're not gonna need to do all that much. I'm just carving a little bit and smushing a little bit. Just making sure the nose is nice and flat. And making sure everything's super smooth so you have a nice painting surface. Like I said, if you get a small hole in the clay, just go in and take a little piece and patch it up. It'll be fine. And I'm so excited to see all your stuff on Monday. thing I think I'm missing because I did carve this off are how the cheeks are on the side. I'm going to try to pinch out as much clay as I can and then I think I'm gonna maybe add a little. We'll see. Yeah, you know, we'll add just a little, little, little onto the ends. I'm just gonna lightly tap that and smooth it in. 
just to add the nostrils coming out a little bit more. Round them off. There we go. Couldn't see that side. So I just shaved, you know, just a little clay off, added a little clay on. And we're good to go. So the one thing that we need to do now is add on the little eyes. I'm gonna actually go in and scrape some of this down a little bit. Just cause I have too much clay. And right into these little ear pieces, I'm gonna build the eyes. All right, so yesterday we talked about how they're slightly slanted. And you're gonna wanna kinda like approximately determine the size of the eye. Definitely a little bit smaller. Um, he has a lot smaller eyes than, it, than you would think. So these are almost like like smaller than a jelly bean. Let me look at it from my direction so I could see if it's right. All right, yeah, I don't want them, so there we go. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add just a little bit of slip Actually, you know what? False. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna carve out just a little bit like that, right under the ear. I'm sorry. And then smooth it out. That'll give it a little bit of an eye socket. Then I'm gonna add oh, a little bit of slip. And I'm going to set these in. So I kind of push them in and then we'll add the eyelid. And like I said, we're gonna smooth these in. You could even use a paintbrush and some water. So we're starting to get those. And now right above He kind of has these eyelids. I'm gonna separate this a little bit more. I'm gonna peel it back. his a little bit more for his ear more back here there we go just a little bit and now I'm gonna make a very very tiny coil little teensy tiny coil And we're gonna smooth that in right above the eye, compress it on there. And smooth it all in. Now after that, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna look at the real one and I'm probably gonna carve a little bit away. 
I feel like I just want to slant it a little bit more. And you could really play around with the shape of the eye now. And I'm just try I'm trying to look at the picture now. This kind of goes back. And then the little ears on the side. So we'll add a little bit more. And when we go in with the underglaze tomorrow, I think it'll be a little easier to tell. Um, but I'm um, adding in again just a little bit of clay and I'm smoothing it actually over the eye and back. And I'm going to smooth the eyes down and over. Just kind of building like a generic shape, but I still want to have like a little eyelid like that, but I want it smoothed in. Everything should be nice and smooth. On this plate, could I go? Uh, who was that? Oh, Stacy, I gotta pick up plate with my mom. Oh yeah, sure, that's fine. All right, have a nice day. You too. And then I'm just gonna go in because I added the eyes in separately and I'm going to add little coils back for the ears. Oh, a little backwards, that's okay. I'm just gonna add that in to the side and smooth, 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 smooth. And you know what, there's no right or wrong way to sculpt, it's kinda as you see it. So if you have another way that is working for you, that is fine. But I just wanted to build that up a little bit through there and I'm gonna emphasize it more tomorrow with the paint. Push it down. So I wanna really smooth these in, compress them in. And it should start to look something like this. If you feel like they're too big, just smooth into the side, but still maintain um, an oval shape. looking at it. I think the one last thing I'm going to do is just puff up the cheeks a little bit more because now that I have the eyes on I think this needs to come out. Just make sure you're compressing clay on anytime you attach it so that we don't get any air bubbles and I'm going to show you guys right after I attach this where you're going to want to make air holes so that your project doesn't go kaboom. Yeah, that's so much better from the profile. I like it. Say that this is probably my final form that I'm gonna use 
before we go ahead and underglaze. However, you'll notice that it's not completely smooth. There's a few things you guys could do. Um, one is to go in with your metal rib and just try to scrape off any of the extra clay. You could also go in with your burnishing stone and burnish any of the little imperfections out, uh, just like we did with our porcelain vases. So those are two different options. I'm just gonna go in and scrape off any of the extra and then smooth it in. And when it becomes a little bit more leather, that becomes easier to do. Uh, once you guys are finished, I'm gonna suggest leaving your project out uh, with just plastic over it very loosely. Very, very loosely. You can also take like a wet paintbrush as well, that would help. Um, but you know, some of these really big areas, I think you're gonna wanna go in with a rib or a burnishing tool. So either scrape off or compress. So either one could help you. I think I might go in and burnish the soil a little bit, just a little bit, not, you know, terribly much. So right now, there are two sections on here that are hollow, but they don't have anywhere for the air to escape. Usually I would use a pin tool for this. Uh, what I'm gonna say is if you guys have something a little bit smaller, uh, more like a pin tool, you can use that. But I'm just gonna use the end of a paintbrush and you're just gonna wanna go in and I'm gonna poke a hole right in the center of the body. And you wanna go in so that it's all the way and you feel that there's no, you know, clay. You wanna make sure that you go through all the clay. That would also be a good time to check the bottom of your feet, make sure they're all good. The other thing we want to do is we want to go in and we want to make a little hole under the chin. Now this part's not as thick. If you guys have something smaller at home, like similar to a pin tool, I'm trying to think what. Um, you, might, you might find something. If you have something a little bit smaller. Um, if not, I'm gonna go in with this pencil and I'm just gonna make a little hole. You could also go in with your paintbrush if you want to. And the same thing, you just wanna make sure that the entire paintbrush like goes into that area and you could feel it kind of wiggle around. Now, if you wanna like enclose that a little bit, you can just because I feel it's kind of big, but you still wanna make sure that the hole is there um, so that the air can escape. So you're gonna need two of them, one under the chin and one on the stomach. Once you get to this point, you're gonna to wanna to smooth it or burnish it um, and get it all ready for your underglazing. We're gonna take a look tomorrow at the different patterns that are on William. If your project's a little too wet though, um, you can go in with a pencil first and just kind of draw out the designs where you're slightly carving in, ever so slightly. So I could go in and kind of start this little circular piece and if you guys could see my carving's not that deep I'm gonna eventually brush off all these little pieces um, but you can still do your underglaze even if it's not dry 
So everyone should be ready tomorrow to start at least drawing out for your underglaze and bringing up a picture to follow. And the patterns are, it's, it's pretty simple shapes. I don't think it's gonna take us that long. So what you guys wanna have for tomorrow is your little hippo constructed and all ready to begin the underglaze process. Make sure that he is nice and smooth. And like I said, if it's a little top, uh, top heavy over here, you could add to the back of the legs or to the back of the hippo um, itself. But that's pretty much uh, you know, how you go about sculpting, adding, subtracting, and just making sure that you're compressing the clay and make sure that you're getting a hole in the body and under the chin.